Good evening, Metal Faithful. This is the Metal Metal Hammer of Doom, and I am your host, the Mandator Reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Rattledge. And tonight is the night. It's a beautiful night. Tonight is the night that we review Monster Magnet Mindfucker. Brought to you by the great people over at Napalm Records. It dropped March 23rd, 2018. We're finally getting around to it. It finally made the playlist. We're going to give it all to you nice and slow. Nice and slow. In and out. All right. Um, and then <laughs> tonight, uh, we're a two man band. Our uh, third member, Mr. Robert Cooper, he's working. He's a working man. But uh, that just means the second chair is open for the takeover. And taking over that chair is the disapproving dad. Don't ask him about Movie Pass because he'll give you an earful. (laughs) He's the host of source material in his own right. Ladies and gentlemen, he's here here for the edumacation. Jesse Starcher, how do you do, sir? Ah, man, oh man. I'm curious as to whether Movie Pass has changed their terms of service again. (laughs) And I just didn't know about it. It's been five minutes. It, ha- it has been five minutes. Ah, uh, Mark Radlich, I tell you what, Monster Magnet, man, I have not really given this band a whole lot of listen other than what I've heard on the radio. So tonight will be an interesting experience as I get to talk this album as being my first introduction to a full album from Monster Magnet. You said I'll tell you what, and I thought you were going to say that you wagged your butt. <laughs> Uh, nope, that's not me. That's the uh, that's the tailless dog that apparently. Where the hell did you hear that at? By the way, that that you, uh, that you wagged that, your butt. Not that I wagged my butt, but you you provided that as a song one time, and I cannot I, I cannot fathom where you possibly ran into that song at some point in your life. I YouTubed corgi butts. Okay, all right. Well then, the song moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Everything is on YouTube, including all the things that used to give me nightmares. But we'll nothing. Talk about that oh later. yeah, no kidding. That's tomorrow. <laughs> the nightmare factory. <laughs> um, all right. In all serious, folks, uh, we're we're, we're going to cut down on the nonsense tonight and just get right to the uh, cut down on the nonsense and get right to the chicanery, as it were. Um, did I ever tell you the story about how uh, we used to talk about like? Paper wrestling pay per views to everyone take a drink, yeah. and um, you know it would be we would we would guess how many minutes the main event match was going to go, but then how much after match nonsense was going to happen, and so we were like ten minutes of wrestling, twenty minutes of chicanery, <laughs> uh, five minutes of wrestling, fifteen minutes of tomfoolery. <laughs> And Sounds of, much like our show here tonight, or uh, on, on most nights. Yeah, and so my friends really did use the word tomfoolery, <laughs> and I remember chicanery is pretty rare. I don't hear that one too often. <laughs> and I remember one of my friends, Jupac, as a matter of fact, didn't Jupac. was not aware of this bit we were doing, and asked in earnest, sincerely, "Who's tomfoolery?" <laughs> The newest member of the NWO. <laughs> well, Tom Foolery, he's uh, he's in the New Age Outlaws. He's the he's he's, he's the one doing the crazy dance. He's, oh, that's great. Yep, it's it's Mister S and Tom Foolery. Um, <laughs> and, and like he said, he's not a, he wasn't a dummy. He just didn't know that that was a real word and thought we were like talking about a dude. Sometimes you miss those things. Those things can completely take you by surprise, and, and you learn something new. Boy, did you guys give him a hard time after that? For years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course. You know how you know how in a lot of our shows now, whether or not people get the reference, we just will randomly ask, when's Peter Rabbit? Oh, yeah. I should have known better. I should have known better, <laughs> considering we got... Hey, wash your pig or whatever the hell it is that keeps coming up. <laughs> hey, your pig is filthy. <laughs> I just should have known the answer to that. My favorite thing is you going, hey, shout out to you, guy. <laughs> uh, All right. Enough. Uh, again, enough of the Tom. She can't read. Uh, enough of the Tom foolery. Enough of the silliness. Enough of the nonsense. So, yeah, 
I all, all I really was aware of by Monster Magnet was Space Lord Mother Mother, and I, I never really gave Monster Magnet enough of a chance. They weren't, at least when I was aware of them, and apparently they put out like a hundred albums since then. I uh, they they weren't like heavy enough. They weren't Pantera basically, and so I never really gave them much of a chance. Now I'm much older, I'm much wiser, I'm much more patient, much more accepting of non thrashy type music. And I have to say, uh, I gave this mind fucker a listen today, and it, it's not it, you know it ain't half bad. It ain't half good neither, but it ain't half bad. <laughs> and uh, I'm excited to talk about it. So uh, you you know you had mentioned before you were not t- tremendously familiar with the magnet, yeah. No, no, sir. I, I can remember. I, I've mentioned one hundred three point one the bear quite a few times down here. I think a lot of times I remember listening to the radio in the late nineties, early two thousands. Uh, you get married, you don't have a whole lot of money to go on, so the entertainment around our house was usually my buddy would come over, we'd play Magic the Gathering, nerd, and uh, <laughs> we would we would crank the radio. I, I beat you to it. See if I do it, I, it, it doesn't hurt as bad. Um, but uh, but yeah, it, we would turn on the radio and I'd listen to the bear and they would play some of the some of the stuff that was coming out. And we we did our Metal Hammer of Doom extras and found out that that came out. I think it was '98, uh, which was uh, which was Space Lord. And man, I, I was like, yeah, that's that feels about right. That's about when I was just after I got married and and listening to the radio a lot. But I didn't go back and grab anything from these guys. I was more into this was probably when I really started kind of getting into Disturbed um, Alice in Chains uh, and they kind of fit the bill there uh, I, I think these guys are billed as like stoner rock a little bit um, I definitely hard rock as, as we're going to hear uh, but I didn't put them in the same league as Clutch I thought Clutch was more stoner rock than these guys when I, for, compared to what I heard um, so you know, it is what it is. It's just something I never got around to listening to and grabbing a whole lot from uh, Monster Magnet. And we're at 11 albums now. So my, you know, my curiosity has peaked when we heard, when, with the title of the album called Mindfucker, just what am I getting into? Well, we all know that it's Ronnie Adams' favorite band and favorite ah, that's album. Right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> when you get the goat penis, you get a Mindfucker. <laughs> Indeed. You, All right, one leads the other. Let's get into this. Um, we, let's get into this album here. We're gonna go ahead and play the first track. This is Rocket Freak. <laughs> She's a rocket freak. She's a rocket queen. <laughs> Here I am, your rocket queen. Oh, yeah. That's Guns N' Roses, right? That's Guns N' Roses, yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. Ah, uh, rocket freak, man. I, I, it's, it's funny because it's a, it's a song about a girl, I think. Uh, he, 
he's talking about a lady here. Uh, it's a hard rocking tune. What do you think of it? Oh, it's ve- it's definitely a hard rocking tune. I liked it a lot, actually. Um, <laughs> I just saw your post. <laughs> it's out there. <laughs> I assume it's a comedy album because there I, was a. I need to send this to my. I need to send this to Jukebox now. <laughs> See if he remembers. I almost posted it on your wall, but I was like, "Oh, Jukebox might see it," and I don't want to offend the guy. I don't want to make him feel bad. I don't he's think he's coming up on podcasts I right actually, now. I <laughs> We're actually laughing at him. don't. <laughs> I actually don't think Jukebox has a Facebook page anymore. Um, uh, whenever on the little bit that we chat these days, because he's still up in New York and you know he's busy with his life of his own. Um, <laughs> okay, somebody somebody just posted the uh, Rotten Tomatoes surprise. Avengers Four has received an unexpected title: Avengers Tokyo Drift. <laughs> okay, uh, well, and I no. need to put this down. Um, <laughs> Stop stop distracting me with your tomfoolery, Jesse. Um, <laughs> Look at that booty. Anyway. Uh, what? That's the name of the album. That's, I believe it's called Look at That Booty. So right. I don't know if he's a rapper. Because the, uh, the first song off of the album here, music comedy, is Nights of White Rappin'. <laughs> so, Great. Uh, I might just have to give this guy a listen just to see at some point what in the world tomfoolery is all about. Maybe we'll have to cover it here on the Middle Hammer of Doom. <laughs> all right. Uh, um, anyway, it was pretty straightforward rock and tune. It was a good one to start off with. It captures your attention. It's got it's a lot of high energy. I don't really have much more to say about it. And, and, and I will tell you this. I enjoyed this album. I'm just going to give away my final thoughts right now. I, I enjoyed this album. And on, but only one song really stood out to me, and it's the very mm-hmm. last song on the album. But we'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, do you, any other insights lyrically into this song? Uh, did you figure out what grade level this was written at? Because I'm going to get third. <laughs> I did not shove any lyrics into the in, into the old lyrical uh, word count. But I can tell you this much: uh, if you listen to this guy and listen to uh, I think his name's Dave Wind- Windor- Windorf. Excuse me, Dave Windorf. If you listen to his lyrics, I mean he he has some st- he writes some stuff that's out there, but can paint a picture. Um, oh gosh, and- if, if we learned anything from his videos, I, I, yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Oh my gosh, fucking Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Jeez, that <laughs> was, was that was that the one where they were like, you know, where their asteroid was a mess, and mom <laughs> they was were like, "Come on, shores. Cl- clean your damn asteroid." <laughs> exactly. This asteroid is a pig pen. Yep, yep. <laughs> and, and we'll talk a little bit, a few more. There's a couple songs on here. I'll talk about the lyrics. But as for Rocket Freak, it, it felt like they were like, "Okay, we got to pick out the best song." That's a that's a a, a real energizing jump off. Uh, let's let's rock and roll here. This is what you're going to get off of this album, and they did a good job. I think Rocket Freak is probably one of the more, uh, I would say, hard rock, rock and roll type songs we have on on here. Indeed, well said, well said. All right, let's go ahead and listen to track number two. This is Soul Man. Da, 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 da. No, it's just Soul.
I got soul. <laughs> we got soul. I got soul. <laughs> Um, I, all right, you know what? Upon second listen, that one stands out. That one was a groovy tune. That one's got the groove that make your booty move. It's the electric groove. They haven't let up off the gas. No. Uh, you know, song two, we're going into it. It's Again, it's it's heavy. Um, it It's definitely something that will... Uh, it, it stands up to track one. And again, these guys are known for having some great guitars... Uh, and some crazy lyrics. I I enjoyed it. I, again, I, I can't say that it's it's anything that made me... I didn't want to turn the song off. That's a key factor. When I'm getting into a brand new band, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be like, okay, I wasn't sure about Monster Magnet. Um, and, you know, I was, I was perfectly entertained by Soul. I, I liked it. You want to know what Dave has to say, Dave Windorf has to say about this album? What does Dave Windorf uh, have to say about this album? Overdrag, or excuse me, Overdrive dash mag, combine those two. dot com. Uh, the first thing you go, you're going to want to know is why such a dumb title, such as Mindfucker, which is the next song coming up here. Uh, but he's talking about the album itself. Why such a dumb title? Number one, I can't go my whole life without calling one record Mindfucker. <laughs> I, I'd be shirking my responsibility as a rocker. Plus, the way things are going these days, stupid is the new smart. Yeah, things are that fucked up. The people who understand my not-so-subtle reasoning here will get it. How many people will that be? I don't know. Now, there has been talk on some of the review sites about politics. Did you get that at all from any of the things that you've heard through this album? Mm, no. Me either. I'm right there with you. And there may be one reference, which I think is in that last song that you like, uh, where he mentions something about a rebel flag. Uh, and I'm not, he's not a proponent of it. He's just talking about somebody who's flying this flag, like General Custer's Last Stand or some shit. But anyway, the rest of the album does not come off to me as like it's something, some kind of super political statement. Um, but I've seen some review sites talk about the politics that have been involved. I think it's pretty light, in my opinion, when it comes to this. It's more just about rock and roll. Uh, so, anyway. I don't know. Whenever I, I think about this album, it actually reminds me of a kid I went to school with who the one quality about this kid that truly rung out to me and was is memorable all these years later was that he wore a T-shirt fairly often that said Mind Funk. <laughs> Okay, what, the, what is that a reference to? Any idea? Mind Funk is a band. Okay, all right. I had a feeling. And the did he have? Did he? Question: Did the man have a ch a chain connected to his wallet? <laughs> we all did back in the nineties, Jesse. <laughs> we all did. Uh, um, just checking. <laughs> but he was specifically referencing the nineteen ninety one epic release Mind Funk. Uh, that was the if I remember correctly, that was the album cover that was on this t-shirt that he wore fairly regularly. And no one, no one I knew knew what the fuck mind funk was. And he was so proud of himself that he, that he had like this obscure band t-shirt because back then that was the game. It was to wear the t-shirt of the most obscure band you could find. Now I didn't know that there would someday be a band called goat penis, but if there was, <laughs> that would have been the band that I would have worn. Oh, oh yeah. That would have been, You've been kicked out of school, and you're just, right. my shirt, man! Right. I would have had to go to Ronnie Adams and borrow his goat penis t-shirt. <laughs> that poor guy's not even here to defend himself. Uh, he never is. I mean, it's rare. Not on the Metal Hammer of Doom. You are not safe, Ronnie Adams. So I had to punish Jonas tonight. Oh, no. Uh, it was time for bed, and his sister turned off his television, so he punched her. Ah, oh, like in the face? No, I think he like punched her in the arm or the leg. Okay, all right. Still, a punch is a punch. Yeah, shouldn't be punching. Yeah, it's one thing to horseplay with me. It's another thing to punch your sister because you don't like what she did, and all she did was what we asked her to do, which was turn the TV off. So, what do you think I did? Tell me you didn't punch this kid. No, of course not. What do you? What do you <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Let me show you how that feels, son. No, I don't. I don't actually don't believe as much as I like to horseplay with him. And I definitely like had to like hold him down and get him like to calm down at times. Um, 
no, like physically restrain him. Uh, no, I don't. I don't believe in using corporal punishment as such. Yeah, then you jackhammered him. And then I jackhammered him. <laughs> Fucking F five, baby. F five around the house. <laughs> All no. right, tell me what sensible punishment did you do? I took the TV away for a week. Ooh, did you like pick it up and leave, or yeah. is it still there? You just took the remote. Took the remotes. Okay. All right. Yeah, he's well, not turning the TVs on without the remotes. And you think... haven't got. You have not got to the level where I came home one night and saw Kira's TV sitting on the kitchen table. <laughs> oh <laughs> I'm like, what my What the hell happened here? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> hang on. I got to hear the story here. Oh, I I have no idea. I'm sure her and her mom got into it about something, and uh, she wouldn't stop. Almost, it almost came to that tonight. But Kira thinks she's funny when she's not, and when she's told to stop, she continues. Then when uh, you say, hey, you better stop that or you're going to lose your TV and you continue your bullshit, guess what? You're going to lose your TV. And I came home and the TV was on the kitchen table. I'm like, what happened here? <laughs> and he's like, well, I told her to stop. I was like, okay, all now, right. Is she just trying to be a comedian and it's like, all right, you're not funny, knock it off? Or is she back talking? Uh, don't know how. <laughs> Here's the thing, Mark. You're a parent. When you say something and you say, okay, that's enough. Sure. That's it. Stop. Right. I, right. now, I, I, I've I been there many she, times with Jonas. Yeah. Now, I understand the difference between joking and, you know, kidding around. But if your parents have had enough of your shit, guess what? You need to stop giving the shit. So I'm most likely she's probably giving her mom a hard time and, and she wasn't listening. When you don't listen, those are the consequences. Right. I, so I don't know. I don't know what it was. I just know that I had to deal with... Can I have my TV back now? 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 And it's like, nope, keep asking, and you're not going to get it tomorrow either. So, but yes, that was the 13-year-old that got in trouble. And let me tell you, the kids, the younger ones, man, don't get the – we've had the Xbox discussion. It's fun to be able to say, okay, hey, you're not going to play your Xbox, but it's – my gosh, it's torture hearing them cry at, 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 at coming home and not being able to do what they want to do they don't they got to play their xbox nope i'm sorry you're grounded from it today and then boom on the floor <laughs> i'm like get up kid <laughs> i think it was yesterday we all had dinner on the couch and we watched an episode of uh kids master chef and jonas was like i'm bored i don't want to watch this all right fuck you uh go <laughs> No one cares what you want. You know, the family is watching MasterChef. Uh, Lily's into it. We're into it. We're all having dinner together. He's like, well, I'm bored. I don't want to do this. Great. Go, go find go. something else. Then go in your room and go go watch TV. Well, I don't want to be alone. Well, I guess you're up against it, aren't you? You're, you're in a pickle. Got to make a decision, don't you? Because <laughs> we're not uh, giving you uh, your way, asshole. Dude, fucking I'm bored is like the biggest <laughs> kid cop out ever. It's it's awful. It's I don't know what's worse. My legs hurt or I'm bored that make me want to punch a nurse practitioner in the face. <laughs> no one else is going to get that, but Jesse does. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. All right. Hey, your pig is filthy. Shout out to you, guy. <laughs> what uh, if you if you punched a nurse practitioner? What what medication would you prescribe? <laughs> <laughs> to take care of the pain. Oh, well, for the anxiety, I might want to. Pre- well, it depends. Is she, is she in jail or not? Because if she's not in jail, I could prescribe her Xanax. Wait, I can't prescribe her anything. I'm not a medical professional. I'm a stupid social worker. All right. Uh, oh, there's the rub. Okay. There we are. All right. Speaking of stupid social workers, let's go ahead and play our next track here, right here in our shoe. Uh, this is our title track. This is Mind Fucker. <laughs>
you're a mind fucker, baby. <laughs> and you're this gonna is... fuck that mine right in its head. Sorry, go ahead. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, th- this is the one that I had no idea would become an earworm for me. <laughs> the thing that got stuck in my head. Were you? Well, I'm... Were you walking around you know, in the dark? <laughs> <laughs> of your, You're of your a mind fuck fuck up. baby. Jesse! <laughs> this is the place of business. <laughs> oh, sorry. Just getting ready for the review. Um, yeah, it it is something that uh, took me by surprise at how it got into my head and just kind of stuck there. Did it? This was. Did it? Did it fuck your mind? <laughs> fuck mind, fucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I would say that. We covered this one. I think this was. I don't know if they released another one as a single or not, but we talked about this video, which the video, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, uh, leaves a little bit to be desired considering it's just them playing the song over uh, the uh, volcanoes in Hawaii, apparently, that are currently going on. <laughs> um, it, it's just fire. That's all it is. But still, it's, it's, uh, it's hard. <laughs> Hard rock at its best. You as, know, I, it's, as they said on the Metal Hammer of Doom Extra, it's, it's Monster Magnet playing atop of Mount Doom. <laughs> yep, yep. There goes Frodo. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's all right. I didn't really have much anything other than uh, it's probably the reason why they picked this off of here. Um, it's, you know, it's the one that sticks out, the one that stands out as most memorable probably and for crying out loud you mean if you got an album called Mindfucker you might as well release the song called Mindfucker if you're apparently uh, Windorf here that's that's your logic and rationale I will say that there are some guitar elements in this song where when the guitars get the chance to shine uh, in this song and on this album I'm I'm really impressed at some of the stuff they do I honestly don't think they have they don't get enough time to shine sometimes I'd like to hear more Tell me more, tell me more. Was it love at first sight? Tell me more, tell me more. Did she put up a fight? We're back into Greece again. (laughs) Fucking Greece too. Oh my god! I I was talking to somebody at work today, and I was like, "So true or false? Greece two, worst movie ever?" She's like, "True," and I'm like, "Okay, we can still be friends." (laughs) Correct, you are. I don't I don't want to hear from people who think Greece two was a good movie. (laughs) <laughs> those, I, I just I'm not they're saying all, they're on YouTube apparently they, go check out some of them comments ugh I <laughs> ugh, 20 dislikes alright um <laughs> so uh when I'm at work you know and I and, and whatever and we're talking uh, you know I like to remind people that I'm awesome you know I'm just the best to work with sure that's true that's what I tell them but I don't what I don't tell them is the title of our next track this, of course, is I'm God. Duh. <laughs> on fire again It's like you want to be dead Truth to tell I don't dig your sound And it could be time to shut the whole thing down
one of our longer tracks of the evening, clocking in at six minutes and 16 seconds. I'm God. You know, again, all of it's been good. All of it's been yeah. solid. Um, Souls stuck out, I think, of the first four tracks for me. Uh, but your mileage may vary. But I mean, all of them have been solid, hard rock tracks. I don't... I agree with you, though. I don't know if I would go as far as to call it stoner rock. Yeah. Yeah, it... This particular album itself feels more... I, I mean, there are rock and roll elements all over the place, for sure, but you'll see as we get to a couple of these songs toward the end, it almost feels like there's punk influence in here. Uh, I remember one specific song. I think it's like second or third from the end. Uh, but, um, you know, it's... Remember how we talked about The Sword being a band out of time? Yes. These guys kind of have that going for them, I think, as well. Uh, there's there's just something that feels throwback to me in regards to... There's, you know, elements of the heavy stuff for sure, but, I mean, if you... One of the reviews I read tonight was from Classic Rock Revisited, who reviewed this album. Uh, so they, they have an appeal uh, to that kind of sound, in my opinion. Um, now I want to talk about I'm God which is possibly me, my favorite track off this album just because of the 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 subject of the song itself uh, I wrote down here Windorf's lyric writing is very entertaining sometimes and this one is fun as he is speaking as the almighty thinking about <laughs> ending humanity as it has apparently been turning to shit <laughs> so I mean throughout the whole song he's referencing about how you know, God's looking down upon his creation. He's just like, what the fuck are you guys doing? What did you do? What have you done? Okay. Uh, and he's thinking about the end times, you know, he's thinking about just, uh, he's just like, you know what? I'm out of here. Uh, don't, you know, don't be surprised <laughs> if I just destroy the place. So, uh, so long. And thanks for all the fish. <laughs> nice try, but I'm afraid not guys. Uh, but I, I really did enjoy that. I think that was probably one of my favorite parts off this album was his, was his take on God looking down at society and, and this particular song. It's definitely on the nose with the title, I'm God. It's not like you can have a hard time figuring out who's singing the song. But uh, Just thinking everybody is Thanos. <laughs> An environmentalist? I don't understand. He's just wanting to end humanity. Uh, no, he's wanting, to, he's wanting to save resources, man. That's his deal. There's I've, not I've, enough resources. I can't remember if it was Winfrey or somebody else who started to go on a diatribe about how, like, the math is wrong. Like, all these people, it was like, we have to conserve resources by, like, killing everybody in the world. And it's like, well, you know, like, that's not true. The, your math is wrong. And, and every time I hear something like that, it's like, I totally get your point. I get it. I just want to watch the movie. <laughs> Well, you, you, I'm sure you've seen the other one that said, well, why not just double the resources? You yeah, got the somebody gauntlet. brought that up. <laughs> so, I don't remember like where I heard that recently, but I definitely heard somebody was like, you have the Infinity Gauntlet, you can do anything. Why not just create more resources? It's like, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> good point. Yes. Well, hey, Monday morning quarterback, 2020 vision. Uh, you know, hey, look, we... we I enjoyed my time at the theater. I hope anybody else that went and saw that movie did the same. So, All right. Uh, this next one is our longest track of the night. Well, you know, we'll play a little less than half, I think. This is uh, Let the Bodies Hit the Floor. No, this uh -oh. is... <laughs> this is Drowning... <laughs> Turning my dreams into dust 
but I'm spinning Then it's all because of you I guess I'll go back on the highway I keep on searching for light So much needed corn in my pocket And I'll prove that I'm doing all right I'm crying cause I met you and I'm dying <laughs> anyway uh, uh, you know it's a slow song um, it kind of took a couple of listens for me to get into it but it, it, a lot of power behind it a lot of emotion I actually really dug it yeah good bluesy feel to it it's okay long song um, you know it's not my favorite off of here but it's not horrible in any way. It's it's decent. Um, I'll tell you again if you listen to Windorf and how he does his, you know, his lyrical stylings, his vocals. Um, it's interesting because he's a guy who sounds like. I mean, the opening part of that uh, that song it sounds like he's just having a conversation with a guy over you know over a cup of coffee, and it actually sounds like he's having a conversation. He's he's you know he's very. Man, I don't know. He can be calm and he can be loud and raucous whenever he needs to as well. The raucous uh, caucus. So, raucous caucus, indeed, it is. It's, it's voting time, isn't it? Around here, maybe it's, it is. It's, it's the name of my new band, by the way. It's a raucous, the raucous caucus. caucus. The raucous caucus. <laughs> oh goodness! But yeah, I, I it's okay. I, it's not my favorite off the album, but it'll do. Drowning. He's nice, but he's too big. It is too big. All right. Uh, let's move this party along. This is not election. This is not erection. This is, of course, when you have to jump out of the plane, it's an ejection. Get it? Get it? Yeah. Yeah.
Too fast, too fast for love, yeah. Too fast, too fast for love, Jesse. Who uh, is that? Is that Molly Crew? Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Your references <laughs> need more. Uh, Footnotes. You need more knowledge here. Come on, tell me what is it? Too fast for love. Um, I believe that's Molly Crew. I want to say it is too. Anyway, is that what you get out of that song? Is that the feel you get? Um, kind uh, of. Motley Crue. I, I, one of the reviewers I read, I felt nailed it, and they said Rolling Stones. That yeah, I, I yeah, okay, it is definitely Motley Crue, by the way. Um, okay, I mean, because like I, you know what it was? It's not even like the sound of the song reminded me necessarily of Motley Crue, and I could definitely get it. That definitely had a Stones, it definitely had a Stones feeling to it. Um, I think it was just more lyrically, you know, it, it's kind of that uh, stream uh, of consciousness. Like, I yep. hear something, and it just reminds me of something else. So, by the way, you know, I, I, and, I, and I now I really wish Ronnie was here to yell at me one more time for seeing this movie. <laughs> but, um, and so, you know how I saw Fifty Shades Freed with my, my little work wife, right? Ah, uh, yes. So, I remember that story. <laughs> so, Honest Trailers from Screen Junkies uh, just j- did an Honest Trailer for Fifty Shades Freed. They've done one for all the movies. Um you know the, the previous two and so they finally did the one for the third one cuz you know that's that's on blue right now mm-hmm. and i sent it to her because i thought she, I, I thought she would she would enjoy a good laugh even though she loves these movies that <laughs> just thinks the 50 shades movies are the best and it's the only movie she was she would deign to see with me is this one because she loves it so much uh, I thought she would get a good laugh out of Honest Trailers taking the piss out of it. Nope, mm-hmm. I got a text last night that went, I'm so mad at you right now, I want a divorce. Oh, she took it, she took it like, oh, man, so she I took said, it wrong. So, I, I, said, so I, I came in this morning and I was like, I thought she would enjoy a good laugh. I didn't realize you were going to get so upset. And she was like, I don't like anything that I like being made fun of. Oh. I'm like, okay, you, you live in a bubble. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, okay. Like, everything I like gets made fun of. Constantly. Yes. It's like, this is the way the world is. She, she felt diminished after that. She, she did. She didn't like that. Oh, that's sad. Well, way to go, Mark. You got Now you got now you got to get a divorce with her. She's upset. You pissed her off. No, we 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 rebonded over the fact that we hate that we hate another person that we work with. So ah, okay, here you go. <laughs> we we found our way back to each other. Yes, you guys finally, uh, or at least made yourselves a happy couple. Yeah, I, <laughs> I uh, did. Well, I've I've learned, you know, just like with my real wife, you know, you learn what what their triggers are, and you know, and if you want a happy marriage, you learn not to continually trigger them. Or you, or you do because that's even better. You know, it's like, well, I, I could live with the misery of an angry wife, but it makes me happy, so I'll just keep doing it. Ugh. <laughs> Who would torture themselves by doing that? Oh, uh, oh, I don't know. There. <laughs> I can think of a few people who who, who feel the need to torture their wives. Uh, way to go. Who is listening to Anzal Elgort? The fuck is that? I don't know, but it came up on your Spotify. Uh, what is an Anzal? Hansel? Hansel? Hansel, Hansel, Hansel. and Gretel? Hansel? Hansel. I, again, it, guaranteed it's probably my daughter. Go upstairs yeah, and ask right her now. who the fuck is Anzel Eg- Elgort and what is You Can Count On Me. I'm not going up there. Call her down. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going. No. Just let her be, Mark. Let her listen to her <laughs> shitty music. That screws up my whole fucking algorithm on Spotify. Oh, my God. Don't you hate that? Because that happens. That happens to me. Like we all have our own profiles now, so it's not as bad. But if they're there for a while, like on like Hulu and Netflix, whoever was watching it was just fucking up all my shit. 
<laughs> my my uh, wife's into ER now, and it's like thankfully she made her own like like Hulu Hulu profile. It was like I don't need all these recommendations. <laughs> I'm gonna watch this shit. Trying to keep it real up here. No kidding. No kidding. You got the wire, and then you got Curious George. Oh, wait a second. No, that's no. <laughs> Why? Why is Curious George <laughs> sucking dick for crack? <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> what's he curious about? All righty. Let's move my. on. Oh my. <laughs> Oh my! Uh, speaking of Curious George sucking dick for crack, this next song is called <laughs> "It's Called Want Some, Get Some, Need Some." That was Want Some by Monster Magnet on the album Mindfucker. What do you think of that one, Jesse? This is a song that I would love to have like production notes for when it comes to, well, the lyrics themselves, because I have no fucking clue what's going on here. I mean, dude, just listen to the opening couple here. Well, they call me the son of the Cobra. I'm the one true master of sound. This is clearly about the Karate Kid. <laughs> Okay, and I love to take the ears off punks like you now and beat them into the ground. Uh, and then, like, a, a second verse, or a se- second part of the song after the chorus, well, I just finished tapping your mother <laughs> on the deep, dark side of the moon. She rides my, I think it said my lizard in the song, but they put legion. I'm sure it's lizard. Uh, she rides my lizard like no other. That demon knows just what to do. Maybe it is legion. I don't know. But regardless... I don't understand what he, who this person is and what they're talking about in this so, song. I have no clue. Well, no, it's very simple what they're talking about. You want me to tell you? What? Fucking in the butt. Fucking oh. in the butt. Fucking <laughs> in the butt. It's that simple, huh? I'm going to have to click the explicit tag tonight, aren't I? Uh, I don't understand how you're getting away with not doing that. <laughs> I know how you're get, not getting away with it, but... But yeah, you, uh, sir. If you had any morals about you, every every podcast that features Mark Gradlich, including Screaming Boy, is marked explicit. You know better. Fucking in the butt. <laughs> Fucking in the butt. Fucking in the butt. Do 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 do. Um, I don't curse as much on some of the other shows. Sure, I'll I'll let you have that. Oh, I no no no. no. So, so you're going to tell me that you hold back. Um, I yeah, you don't consciously hold back. Yeah, you can say I don't curse as much. Or what are we talking? A difference of like ten to eleven curses versus like twelve and thirteen on another one. I feel like you're judging me. <laughs> I feel like you're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I think damn you, Hollywood. I tend to stick strictly to the material, and so you know, and and Robert doesn't curse, so I tend to ah, not true. curse as much. That's true. Um, Sean and me can get. You should have heard Let's Lights Battleship. Um, have you have you have you have you ever seen the movie Battleship? No, I have not. So, so my contention is that the reason the movie happens the way that it does is because the aliens that attack the Earth are actually from the Alabama part of space. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> they're redneck aliens, you see. Oh and, boy! And that's why they crashed onto the planet, and you know the things occurred in the movie that 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 they did. 
Nice. It, yep, that was my argument. Good theory. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and if you believe that, then you too are brainwashed. You know, one of the I don't know if you'll get this or not, how much you know about the singer, but I got a very Jello Biafra vibe from the way he sings on a lot of this album. That that song in particular. There are. I saw. I think it's the next song where I get like Jim Morrison. Is it Jim Morrison? I almost called him John Morrison. Who was the lead singer of the Doors? Jim Morrison. Thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> John Morrison was a wrestler. It was... He was a wrestler, sir. Uh, no, I. I don't know much about Jello Biafra, but don't I can know tell much you that about history no, or Jello Biafra. Don't know much about biology. Bum, 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 bum. Do you know much about prescribing medication? <laughs> 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 Reference. Uh, so, so yeah. I mean, I can see where you you get that. I, I can see where you could try and tie this guy's vocal styling into something like that because I was pulling him from uh, like the doors and how he kind of sounds hmm. this next one we listened to. I think that's the one where I was like, Oh man, this, you know, this felt, it felt like a door song to me. Um, would you say that that song had some punk influence into it? Yeah. Okay. I'm actually going to play a song for you. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to play a song. Cause I don't think I've ever played lard for you. I might've, you might've heard some lard on that playlist that I sent you like way, way, way back. Yep. Um, I remember. I remember Lard. I remember talking about that. Uh, man, shit, that was like two years ago. But yeah, go ahead. So I'm going to play a song here. I'm going to. I'm going to play as much as I would play if we were doing the whole album away. This is Mate Spawn and Die from the Last Temptation of Reed. He came out in 1990. I want you to think about the way he sang that last song, and then listen to him sing this one. All right. So here we go. This is this is the power of Lard. All right. Here we go.
I let that go a little bit longer than I should have because I love that line. You can't throw me to the lions. I'm Charlton Heston. <laughs> The one nine hundred suck me dry. I dare you to say that that's to somebody at work tomorrow. <laughs> Fuck no, dude. Uh, they have no idea how how horrible I am. I am not outside of work. You know, cuss like, like a sailor. No, nope, no. Nope. Jesse, I need you to do the uh, PT report. The, TP, the TPS yes, report. I'm going to need you to come in Saturday. Do some TPS reports. Well, you can dial one nine hundred. Suck me dry. I'm gonna need you to start these meds. No, I'll dial nine one hundred. Suck me dry. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah. I, okay. Well, yeah. Your your uh, your comparison there. I could see it. Yeah. Uh, you were saying in regards to the vocals. So, I definitely can see where you're coming from. Fantastic. I, uh, I I love that song. By the way, that's got oh, some that's great. That, that's got some great lines in it, and and I and I should have turned it off a little bit sooner, but I can't not hear him yell out. <laughs> just because it it reminds me, because I remember, like you think I'm bad with the references. I come from a whole group of friends who were just as bad, so we were we, we were constantly referencing stuff that people had no idea what the hell we were talking about. And I remember one of my friends just like walked into a room and yelled out. You can't throw me to the lion's eye, Charlton Heston, and walked oh, out again. Jeez, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> the whole point is to confuse people. Yeah, that's got to be what it is. It's like, what the fuck just happened? Always, you know, always keep them on their toes. I, I guess so. All right, uh, we're getting down to the wire here, uh, down in a hole. So let's go ahead and listen to the second to last track of the night. This is All Day Midnight. Sure. <laughs> that was okay. Um, it is. It's yeah, good. Yeah, it's all right. All right. Um, I don't want to waste any more time here. We neither one of us had a whole lot to say about that last one. This this next one is the last track of the album, and it is my favorite track of this entire mindfucker album. This is what this is the difference between a B plus and an A minus for me. This is. It's coming down. No, that's a dancing song. Uh, this is 
when the hammer comes down. Well, it took ten songs, but we finally got to something that sounds uh, really, really stoner rock. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were just about to hit that point. <clears throat> um, it says, tell me if you're a monkey or tell me if you're a man. You're waving a rag from a pickup truck like it's Custer's last stand. Well, you just keep on rocking Alpha from the dumbass side of town. And may I advise you that you cover your eyes because the hammer's coming down. Bring me Thanos! <laughs> so, sorry. As soon as I played the track and said and said the line, I was like, "Wait, wait a minute." <laughs> I feel like this is about Thor. Um, it's it's probably not though. All right. Um, a minus for this one. It was look an entire album full of solid songs. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you that. My my problem is is that there isn't enough on here for me to go. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I want I want more of this. It, it, it isn't something that gets up here. I'm gonna read my review because I'm I'm jumping around here. Uh, so a uh, first f- for me here with Monster Magnet, their eleventh album is the first album of theirs that I've I've fully listened to. We've kind of covered that. Uh, is it a good place to start? From what I understand, it is, and my opinion, I think it is as well. Uh, however, I was not overly impressed with the album itself. Uh, there really wasn't anything on the album that I felt I needed to share with my fellow metalheads. So I don't know if there's going to be a track that I'm like, oh, man, you got to listen to this Monster Magnet track. Um, nothing jumped up and grabbed me by the sack like Judas Priest's firepower <laughs> easily did. It took you sack. <laughs> Judas Priest's firepower. I mean, dude, we covered that album, and I would never listened to a full Judas Priest album. So this this is the same situation I was in, and Firepower blew me out the fucking water. Did it, I mean, uh, did it one nine hundred suck you dry? <laughs> it might have. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, making it, it, you know, this didn't make me go, "Holy shit, what have I been missing?" This just felt like a solid rock album. Uh, Mindfucker was just there, you know. It was good. It, it just wasn't anything that really was spectacular. So at the end of the day, Monster Magnet's Mindfucker earns the 12th spot, in my opinion, out of the 15 albums we have reviewed so far this year, right between Leaves Eyes and Morbid Angel. So that's my personal opinion. But I can tell you right now, Mark Radlich, 
the other reviewers, uh, Metal Wani gave it eight and a half out of ten. Blabbermouth gave it, gave it eight and a half out of ten. The Obelisk.net said it was um, uh, that uh, it was typical Monster Magnet. Uh, they sound like Monster Magnets, so yes, <laughs> that's it's what you get. Ghost Ghost Cult Man gave it a six out of ten. There's a little bit of criticism there, so uh, and Cryptic Rock gave it four and a half out of five stars. So. Uh, I mean, I think the consensus is going along with you, Mark. It's a it's a good rock album. Uh, it just it isn't something that really stood out to me and my uh, for for myself anyway. Uh, yeah, you know, I think just to kind of close out the discussion and move on to plugs. You know, it's one of those where if if one of these songs comes on, look, every single song I was bobbing my head to, every single song had a good groove to it, had some swing. You know, it's a solid album. I think the problem for me is that it, you know, it's serviceable. It doesn't stand out. There's, it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a genuine quality to it. It sounds like another Monster Magnet album, mm-hmm. and I think that's its biggest detriment. Is that this, this is just one where they, you know, where they. You know, they went into the studio, they did their thing, they came out, and it was a solid effort, and it just kind of goes back into the pile when you're done with it. And you're like, okay, well, we've done that one now. Yeah, yeah. I I can't agree more. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and do uh, plugs. Next week, another one from the Ronnie Adams uh, playlist, Demu Borgir. <laughs> Ronnie Adams secret <laughs> super secret Spotify playlist <laughs> Ronnie Adams secret stash uh, so just to finish out the month of May we got Demu Borgir next week their new album uh, after that is the new Five Finger Death Punch and then we close out the month of May with another Star Wars week we're going to look at the Han Solo comic we're going to look at Solo uh, the new movie and then we clean up uh, the week with uh, Intergalactic Planetary, with the Galactic Empire, their second release. Are you excited about this? Oh, hell yeah, buddy. I'm, I'm ready. Rock and roll. This is called Episode 2. Uh, it's already been released. It's out there if you want to give it a listen to. But I wanted to save it for when uh, the, you know, the solo movie came out because, you know, it, it just fits so well together. So... Uh, that's what we're going to do in the month of May. Uh, as far as our other shows this week, we uh, we went to go slaughter He-Man. He, he's a sissy. We made it hurt. Um, <laughs> we looked at uh, He-Man Thundercats, um, and we had a discussion over... We had a brief discussion over our uh, our toys, what makes good wrestlers, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, we put Battleship on trial last night, uh, and tomorrow, uh, people, you know, people have been like, hey, do more movie commentaries, more movie commentaries. I've been pushing it, man. I'm trying to pull stuff out of the Wayback Machine, um, you know, and uh, find stuff for us to do. It's just there's plenty of content out there. We just don't have a tremendous amount of time. But uh, recently we've been having discussion of, you know, nightmare fuel from our youth. And I submitted that The Last Unicorn by Rankin and Bass definitely added to my nightmare fuel as a kid. So uh, to that I say, Unicorn Haggard! Uh, We're going to do it. (laughs) The entire Last Unicorn movie is on YouTube. We're going to go ahead and watch it, a whole group of us, and then I'm never going to sleep again. (laughs) Oh, it's going to be so fun. Well... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, go give the Rattlich in Broadcasting Network Facebook page a like to stay up on top of all the great podcasts that we have to offer. There's something most likely on this network that you would enjoy listening to, whether it be our discussion about comics, our discussion about movies, our discussion about Movie Pass and its shithead of a, a CEO. <laughs> uh, I, it, there's going to be something on there, so check it out. You can either download, you can subscribe and get all the great content automatically. Or you could just go in there, pick a show out that you'd like to listen to. Source material, the comics book podcast, comics book, no, comic book, <laughs> comic book, comic, comic book podcast. God damn it, Jesse! <laughs> just want to make it through one night of plugs <laughs> without fucking them up. Ah, hey, I actually, um, I have a question to ask you. Yeah. 
Um, tomorrow night when we do the last unicorn commentary, can we do it through Google Hangouts, and then can I depend on you to rip it and rip it and post it? Oh yeah, absolutely. I can do that real easy. Cool. Not a problem. Not a problem. So, yes. Uh, anyway, the uh, the comics podcast that I am a part of, source material, we're at over 160 episodes now, ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening to this, there's a possibility that you went and saw Avengers: Infinity War. Well, I'll tell you right now, there are plenty of comics that we talked about that fall within or include some of the characters that you saw in Infinity War, including the book that the whole movie was based off of, which was Infinity Gauntlet. There's two of them on there. One we did way back when, and one we just recently revisited, uh, the Infinity Gauntlet saga. So you can check that out. Uh, and I, I think that's about it. You can follow me at Stiznarchy on Twitter, at SourceMattCast on Twitter for my own uh, source material, uh, comics podcast Twitter page. Also, check out the YouTube page where you're going to find a lot of the Metal Hammer of Doom extras. I don't know if anybody was brought to this podcast from any of those, but every once in a while, me and Mark Radlich will... And we'll, we'll kind of sit back and take a look at some of the videos of the upcoming uh, artists that uh, we're going to be talking about. And we just did three videos for Monster Magnet. Was it three? It was three, right? Mm-hmm. And then we did, and then we did, uh, we did uh, follow that bird mashed up with motherfucking Beastie Boys sabotage. <laughs> So that's out there on the Source Material YouTube page. You can find that pretty easily. Uh, okay, turn it over to you, Mark. Let's get out of here. All right. Well, there will be no Metal Hammer of Doom extras this weekend uh, because uh, Mother's Day is the 13th, and i got to go to fucking brunch. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it's fucking, we, brunch. fucking brunch. Fucking um, brunch. <laughs> however, uh, we will come back with some Metal Hammer of Doom extras the Sunday before the five finger death punch because there's, there's some definitely some five finger death punch videos that I feel like we need to talk about. So, uh, get ready have for that. Have you heard, have you heard the new single, which is champagne? I have, I've heard them. I've heard them both. Oh, fucking, I have things to say. I cannot <laughs> wait. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> uh, out comes angry starcher. Once again, <laughs> He's just telling... that one song. The album could probably kick ass, but I really do have problems with champagne. So, <laughs> All right. Well, we'll talk all about it. All right. In the meantime, in the green time, in the lean times, this has been uh, the Metal Hammer of Doom for the disapproving dad, Jesse Starcher, uh, for the Metal Coop, Robert Cooper, who could not be with us tonight because he's out there uh, in the working world because he's the working man. I am your mandate reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Rattledge. Be well. Be safe and behave. 